Good afternoon and welcome to Lunchtime Series with Kevin, where we add value to people's lives happening every day at 12 on ebuzzradio.com. Joining me for the Lunchtime Coaching segment today, we are chatting to agile talent strategist, leadership expert and executive coach, Anya van Beek. Anya, how are you doing? Hi, Kevin. Lovely. It's so nice to be back in your studio yeah. today. You've been here before, and you know, like the last time we 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 sp- we had a fantastic conversation, and I was like, no, we we need to get you back. Let's have some more. Um, so yeah, I mean, and today's conversation, uh, I really love the 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 in uh, the sort of the inroads to this because I think you know a lot of the time people very often get this conversation wrong. Um, and it's a really good conversation to have and give people some some more insights on that. But I'm gonna uh, you know leave you to just preface uh, who you are, what you do, give us a bit of background, and then sort of what we are going to be chatting about today. Okay, lovely. Yeah, I think the best place to start would be perhaps to just think of my last corporate role, because I used to be head of HR for a big multinational, and I think that is where my focus on building a human-centric environment where people are really the heart of the business comes from. And as you've mentioned, the topic for today is all about onboarding. And I think that is when I left corporate and starting one my own business, that for me was one of the key focus areas is to support leaders and HR teams to really be mindful and intentional about creating that environment where people can thrive. And I mean, Kevin, as you have mentioned earlier as well, um, just looking at the last year, it's even more critical than before to when you get people joining your organization to make them feel that they belong, the sooner the better. And I think yeah. that's why it's so important to talk about onboarding. But just be, I mean, before we just get there, and I know that you're going to get go into depth with it. Yeah. Do you think, you know, it's a conversation, as you mentioned, that, you know, just looking at the last year, the last 12 months, the the approach that we take the considerations that we're making the 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 um, environment that we're creating for for our workforces uh, all of that is starting to play out so much differently i mean randomly uh, i'm a complete tic- uh, tiktok junkie so but i, <laughs> I was looking at and someone was making predictions about the way that we're doing work is going to change to such a degree that uh, that, that we're almost unprepared for how it's going to change. Because now people know that, oh, I don't have to necessarily be in an office. I can be here doing this and still work. Yeah. I can still be really productive. I can look at outcomes rather than input. Um, uh, you know, all of it's literally changing and thrown it on, on its head. And I think onboarding is, you know, it's, it's, it's the place to start. Yeah, no, definitely. And I mean, just to comment on what you have mentioned, and I think that is why I really feel for the people in the HR environment over the last 12 months, because it was almost as if it was overnight that they had to support businesses to change processes, as you've mentioned, the way that we uh, perform and do performance management, the way that we support people to be productive from the offices and I mean, I've been in HR myself, and I know that so often we introduce procedures to a business, and sometimes we are worst enemy because we (laughs) provide something that's not necessarily adding value. We might like the process, or we have a very specific reasoning in mind, and that's where I think, especially from an HR perspective and looking at the, um, as you say, the people in the in, in the environment is to ask them, what is it that they want? Um, and you don't have to come up with all the, all the solutions. It's really about co-creating because, as you said, the way that we do work has changed almost 360 degrees. I mean, um, it's it's totally different and we don't have all the answers and we're not the ones sitting there at home necessarily, um, you know, based in another country or the only one based in a different, um, the, yeah, the, the, uh, on your the own or whatever market. it might be. So, yeah, it's so important to hear what the leaders and not only the leaders and managers, but the colleagues, the employees need as well. Yeah, I mean, and just to say that, and I, I'm I'm fortunate enough to be coming up in in the next couple of months um, with with uh, being and being in a remote position where I'm actually going to be able to work remote. And just this weekend, I was thinking, what if I actually went and stayed in I don't know Hungary for a month, and I because I still had to do my I, I have to do my work on online in any case. Yeah. 
but the thought of just being able to do that is already like an option. You kind of yeah. like, I could just stay there for a month, right? If I travel and I'm traveling for business or whatever, uh, I might be able to do that, you know? So, yeah. um, but I mean, uh, to the point of the today's conversation, I mean, like the, the article you shared and and um, guys, definitely, if you want to see this, um, go and check out Anya on, on LinkedIn. Um, she shares a lot of great information and uh, wonderful posts as well. Um, and uh, one of the things that you share, and I'm sure if you haven't yet, you'll probably share these, Anya, but the the mistakes that onboarding uh, in our onboarding process you know so speak to us about what are the mistakes that we're actually making because i think this there's, there's big ones happening at the moment no yeah, no most definitely and i think one of the first mistakes that we make is after the interview process now that you have appointed the successful candidate and you might perhaps even have shared some of the contracts and you know get the signed agreement going um, and one of the big mistakes is waiting for the first day to have contact again it's so important for you to after the recruitment process, almost immediately, it must feel like an ongoing journey um, to reach out and connect. Now, um, some of the bigger organizations do have the luxury of having a platform where someone can log on, they can even, um, you know, start to read some of the material that links to their role but not yeah. everyone has that luxury and I just say whatever personal contact it can be the manager it can be someone from HR just connecting and saying you know what we're excited you're starting in two weeks time any questions from your side but make the effort to connect with them before the first day so I mean off the just randomly off the cuff isn't it a case of HR to a degree, and I'm making a generalization, but isn't it a case that HR to a degree has got to just following the process and they forget that whole human element? Yeah, so that's a very good question because I think that really opens up the conversation whose responsibility is it? Because in my mind, it's not HR's responsibility, but they need to enable the manager or the leader to do that as well. So it's mm -hmm. quite important for any organization, at least just to have the conversation. If we think about the employee experience, if we want to have a powerful and a meaningful onboarding process, who's going to take responsibility for what? And I mean, seeing that the person is going to report into you, going to be part of your team, I actually think it's an ideal place for the line manager to reach out by themselves. But again, that there's no right or wrong, Kevin. I think that's where the co-creation part comes into play to say this is an important step. So who's the best person to reach out at this point in time? I mean, if you're a manager of a bigger team, it might just not be feasible, and that's where HR can step in. But in my mind, it's really that balance of who's taking ownership, because in the end, the ownership is really with the manager to start building that relationship with a team member. So it's not only really HR to tick, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, HR is part of that process, but essentially, you know, if you're going to be working with a group of people or, or you, I, you know, you're reporting to that person, the person who, who sort of sat in the interview with you and went through this should kind of check in with you and say, hey, how's things going? Have you gone through documentation? And, you know, there should be some kind of uh, – more personalized engagement, especially yes. now that we are working remotely and, and teams are, um, you know, scattered and all over the show. Yeah. So I mean, that's pro tip number one. So don't wait for first day to, to connect with them. Absolutely. What yeah. is the next thing that we, we should definitely be, be checking for? So just before we go over to, to tip number two, you know what's a practical, easy example? You, my yeah. manager, you reach out, you're checking in with me. You can even via WhatsApp share a one minute, not long, one, two minute video that was done by the CEO of the organization. Can you imagine how powerful it is that your manager sends you a two minute video to watch message personally from the CEO? And that should not take long. I mean, we all have smartphones. <laughs> you can, you know, you video message videotape that message and and you send yeah. it i mean that's a powerful connection um but yeah that's step number one but i mean so i'm just sorry to me yeah. that because then Im immediately i'm kind of going okay then the ceo really needs to he needs to be on board with how how hr plays or onboarding plays out in his business 
and he needs to be part of that cog then, right? Yeah. It can't just be, oh, you are employing, you are doing your assignment. It has to be, he has to be part of the cog. And even if it's just the WhatsApp that kind of introduces and says hello, but he needs to be part of it. Yeah. And again, I think that is why when you think of the overall or the overarching conversation about what is it that we as a leadership team, now let's think EXCO team, you might think leadership team of a specific department, but what is it that we want the employees to experience? And again, I mean, if I'm the CEO of a company, I would like them to know who I am, what's important to me, and perhaps share a story about something about the purpose of the organization that is not only number 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 but numbers but that it's something you know it can be a small personal story how the business started or when he joined or whatever just something to connect to start that connection yeah absolutely so and then uh, moving on to that second one you you mentioned uh, something that that sort of lends itself to what we're talking about yeah and again that is if you think of that employee experience it's so important to understand what's the difference then between induction and onboarding so let's just go back a year before now when it was still um, not hybrid but still face to face most of us in the offices induction very often used to be a one day interaction you come in, there's an induction program for day number one, and then you start with your work. Um, even now in the hybrid work, it's even more challenging. So lots of people have taken that one day induction, and now it's a one day virtual. Um, and we have a Zoom or a MS team or whatever meeting. And my first tip there would be, is don't think of induction, rather think of onboarding and think of a journey for at least the first 100 days. So it's not wow. only about day one. It's really about what do we need to do in the first week or the first month or the first quarter. Um, and that depends from company to company. But again, it's that mindset of it's a continuous process. It's not we're in and we're out and we've ticked that box. It's really about, I think, employee experience yeah, it described it very, very good. Um, because if you then think of onboarding, and especially now with the virtual way of working, it might be a two-hour connection or an hour connection at the start of the day. And then there's different agenda items for the rest of day one. And then you might follow up on the third day three with another one hour uh, you know, session. Uh, yeah. it, again, it varies if it's only one person starting at the company or is there multiple people or are they from the same um, department or different departments because there's definitely general things that you need to share. You know, where do you get your payslip? Which HR system? How do you apply for leave? That type of admin, uh, you know, procedures. But yeah. then also more important things about, but what is the value? What are our values? Are they vital behaviors? And I love that when you pull in people from the business, it does not need to be someone in HR, you know, doing the induction or the, on, or the onboarding then. It can be different role players coming in and doing a specific session um, and that way sharing the journey and the story of the company that you've just joined. It's almost having an induction team, right? You, yeah. <laughs> it sort of handles this kind of process, especially for bigger organizations, because there's so much that needs to happen. And I mean, I've often heard, uh, I, I haven't worked in a corporate for some time now, but sorry, I've got helicopters. Sorry. <laughs> Hopefully not looking for you, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> not today. <laughs> it's Monday. I'm, I'm fine today. Okay. But um, the, the, um, I, I've been to, you know, like I, I've heard of, of so many times when you join an organization and people arrive and they kind of go, you know, well, I, I know where my table is. I know, you know, I know that I have to be at the 11 o'clock meeting, but now um, other than that, I'm just here. And, mm -hmm. and it takes them a, a couple of weeks to even find their, their groove and their mojo. Right. But if there was a bit more process and there was a bit more thought around how this onboarding happened, um, that person, uh, individuals, would really go on board uh, far more quicker um, and add to, to, to why they're there in the first place. Yeah, and that is why I always recommend, irrelative of the size of the organization, is to um, link them with what we call an onboarding buddy. And an onboarding buddy is a colleague, is a team member, can be from the same team or another department, and they actually there to take ownership or 
support you from exactly like you say, I don't want to ask my manager about this, but perhaps someone else can guide me and then I need step two might be to go to the manager if I still don't have the answers. But it's like you say, it's just thinking holistically, okay, who can impact this? And very, very importantly is let's ask the people who has sought in the last quarter and hear what was missing. You know, what yep. tips can they provide us? Um, what was missing in their onboarding process? Yeah, absolutely. So now I, one of the things you mentioned is um, don't let perfect be a blind spot. Yeah. So give us what, what does that mean? Because yeah. you know, people often, uh, they aim for perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, that, not only from a, you know, individual perspective, but specifically from a team perspective as well. And now here I talk to the um, HR professionals in the businesses because HR, you know, you want to add value and you want to be that strategic business partner and not only, you know, focusing on the admin tasks at hand. And very often they want to, you know, roll out something that is perfect before they introduce it to the business. And that's where I encourage people don't do that. Yeah. I have almost that mindset of something is good enough or it's good enough to go because, I mean, rather get it into the business and tweak as you receive feedback. I mean, we have spoken about psychological safety and on a different occasion. But for me, it's it's very much that concept of let's all be okay to experiment and learn and tweak as we go along. But it starts with that whole mindset of don't wait until something is perfect before you roll it out. But it also lends itself to being, you know, and it's it's one of the key sort of foundations of so many organ organizations is the uh, being agile you know having an agile approach to something you know you create it and tweak it as it goes along you know you can't finish the whole thing and then gonna oh okay well this is what we're doing yeah. because there's so many lessons that you're going to be learning along the way and probably lessons and 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 input that you may have not thought of exactly. so you know if you just start and you kind of go, I'm always like that, you know, uh, I think there's a, there's a, there's a, 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 a theory behind um, taking about 90% action and then, uh, you know, 10% of it you think about, yeah. <laughs> you kind of have that sort of um, scenario around it because it does, you know, then, then you, you kind of go, okay, yes, um, this is working or no, this is not working. Yeah. Um, but I, I completely hear that. And because essentially that will be the blind spot of the organization in the long run. Exactly. Now, let's think of that example I've used with the video of the CEO. Now, I mean, any business leader would like to come across, you know, assertive and I don't know what, whatever they want to do. Powerful. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now how long is it going to take to take that two minute video and perhaps just to say, you know, here's your script, make it your own and just go for it. And the first one or two takes would be okay. Don't let's not waste too much time on it. Another important part is that you want to have cues uh, for the new employee to know that they belong. And again, I mean, there, if we think of perfect being the blind spot, we can say, okay, you know what? We want them to have a printed T-shirt with a slogan or we want to have whatever. But again, as you say, rather have something small and give it to them that's linked to one of the values of the organization. I've once read, I think it was LinkedIn, where one of their values is something to do with a global community. And they have some something as simple as a postcard uh, with someone's name on it. And it's someone that is in a different country than yours. And you yeah. just, you know, complete this postcard and you post it to someone. And that's a way of connecting to someone in a different country. Now, again, wow. how easy is that? And again, you, not being, I want something perfect and I want something that's best practice. Just start somewhere and see how it goes. And if it does not work, let's tweak. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's that whole like uh, fear of failure. It always comes in, you know, it creeps yeah. in some way. And you kind yeah. of go, oh, but what if it doesn't work? It's like, okay, well, then it doesn't work. You know, it's yeah. not too bad. Yeah. Um, then you speak about, don't forget the whole brain thinking in your planning. Yeah. What, is the, uh, what does that mean? No, so the, what I have seen leaders very often do is we're very comfortable with who we are. And each one of us has a different thinking preference. And when we communicate with people, we tend to fall back 
on our preference. So it yeah. might be, Kevin, that your preference is very factual, very um, to the point, and my preference might be, you know, focus on the people and focus on the human behind the role, etc. And I will communicate with you in that style. And that's why we say whenever you, you know, you um, de design an onboarding process, just don't allow your own preference to take over. And I think that's again, to the point that you've made earlier on why it's so important to, to have a team working on it. Because it, for the one person, they might focus on the factual, to the point, etc. The other one need the detail. Okay, I know you said that there's a leave policy, but I need to understand where do I have to go? How do I complete the form? And someone else might not even be interested in that. Um, if you think then of the whole brain, as we call that, someone might think about the future. What's the purpose? What's the long-term goals? How do we innovate at the company? And then there's other people that might want to know about what's the rituals? What's the culture? Uh, what is the culture about? So I think just have that whole brain in, you know, in mind when you roll something up because it's a very fine balance of giving the one enough without you know, losing the other one. Um, if I'm someone that like detail, you can actually say, you know what, let's have a big overview. And then if you need more information, this person tomorrow will be available. Um, so it's really just tweaking the process according to your whole brain thinking. And also, just to add to what you're saying now, what makes so much sense is, you know, our, our own learning preferences. So, you know, from a visual, uh, kinesthetic or uh, auditory kind of learning process, you know, sometimes maybe they just want to listen to to a video or maybe they, they like seeing the visuals of something. And, you know, what I'm also starting to notice with a lot of these conversations that we're having with leaders is... Um, uh, Recently, with a really big organization, um, the head of the leadership designing the leadership program spoke about the feeling, the feelings I associate to this value. And I was sitting in, I was like in the meeting going, you're talking about feelings? Are you like, I, which, which for me resonates so much because we know how emotion can drive behavior, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But, yeah. you know, from an all onboarding process now, you, you're kind of going, Imagine if part of your onboarding process was taking into account your learning processes, your, your own communication styles, but also made someone feel like they belonged, you know, and suddenly you're going, ah, okay, yes, um, I really want to work here because yeah. that's, that's the, at the end of the day. And what you've just mentioned is so important because if we think of emotional intelligence, and that's not something new, but it's really bringing in that emotions into the business because that's exactly what we see now, nowadays. So many leaders are so comfortable with the strategy and the product design and whatever, you know, focus they need to have but on yeah. the I almost want to say the strategic aspect and they're not very comfortable with the people side of the business and once again that is where HR can play such a big role supporting and almost coaching the leaders through that. So I want to say kudos to that HR, um, you know, the development leader that you've mentioned, because even just having a conversation about what's the emotion or the feeling that we want to leave with the people, I mean, I can remember in corporate, there was not many meetings where we spoke about feelings and emotions. But nowadays, it's normal. I mean, people with that human-centric approach needs that, and it, we need to be mindful of that. Yeah, you know, and and I think the um, yeah for me because I can I get so carried away, especially around the neuroscience of it and how it the, the meaning that it starts having and how it influences the environment, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but the fact that it's it's becoming it's being pushed to the foreground where people are actually going, you know, uh, you, just the word human capital. If you kind of go there's capital in the fact that we have humans doing this. There's capital there and they should be considered as capital. Yeah. You know, it's like changes the whole conversation around, okay, if that's, if you can actually see them as valuable, yeah. how would you then start showing up and how would you then start changing processes to, to make sure that they feel valuable? And I think perhaps just to your point that you've mentioned about the differences or the different ways how different humans or individuals learn. And I think that's such an important point because remember we spoke about 
perfect being a blind spot. But that's something else that I've seen in the HR world is that we want one process and it should work for everyone. And it's unfortunately <laughs> not the case. And, and this I, is how to do it, yes. <laughs> yeah, and this is how to do it. And I think that is why it's so important that when you think of onboarding to say, okay, we have an hour or two hour sessions together and then you can choose there's some videos to listen. If you prefer to have it face-to-face, -face, there's a session that, that you can attend tomorrow. Again, giving them options um, of how to go through step two or three or four. Um, and I think that is, that's critical. And again, I think the, the more people can understand that the better you understand and know the human in front of you, the better we will create environments where people can thrive and be successful and perform better yeah so i mean it, 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 just as a side note like i'm just looking at your your notes here like do you get to a point where you actually connect them with your with your team members so this person's going to start in in a month's time do you have a sort of a, a 30 minutes like intro session and everyone meets and like this is a team uh, and we all have do you go to that extreme or is that part of a process that you just wait for? Yeah. So, again, it varies from company to company. I have seen companies where the team members were actually part of the recruitment process and oh, wow. they were actually part of let's choose who's going to join our team, especially in agile organizations where the team is working so closely it's a very common um, thing that you see where not only the leader, but the, as I said, the colleagues actually select um, who will be joining our team. Um, but to your point, I don't necessarily think it's necessary to do it beforehand. I think as long as they meet the team on day one, um, we used to very often on day one as one of our requirements had that you need to have a team um, lunch or get together on day one and that was in our diaries and we know day one we will go and have a lunch it's not always possible for everyone to join but very similar in the virtual environment to make sure that at least then in week one if it's not possible on day one to have a team intervention and that's pure no work talk who you who are you what do you do and get to know one another from a personal perspective um, you can obviously combine it with more work-related things, but I think so often that takes the focus and we need the, t the um, time for the team to almost get to know one another from a personal perspective as well. So, I mean, one of the pro tips that you share, and I love this, and I think that, you know, it's a fantastic idea, is is having a virtual CEO breakfast and make, make arrangements with Uber Eats to deliver a coffee or a bagel at the new employer's house yeah. as part of <laughs> and I'm going, will people do that? Will CEOs do that? I'm like, I mean, you, you, this, you've been in this space, you know, you know, like you've yeah. been there. So do people do that? Will they do it? So you know what? I think the clever people will definitely do that. And you know why I say that is we used to have a CEO breakfast. Um, I can't remember if it was monthly or quarterly. Um, I think it was monthly, but if there's not enough, we, we just arrange it on a quarterly basis. And that was a morning where the CEO and at least two of the other directors had breakfast with the newbies in the organization. And they talk about who they are, their story, how they joined. And obviously they talk a little bit, little bit about the purpose, the value and the vision for the organization. But it was really about um, getting to know the people. And now that they've moved virtual, they're now doing it virtually and they do have Uber Eats delivering a coffee at your door. And again, wow. if you want to, um, we were talking about that emotion, that feeling. Now, if you have a CEO breakfast and your bell rings and there's a little, you know, packet with cappuccino and a toasted sandwich, I don't know what they would include there, or just a muffin or whatever, I mean, you would be impressed and you would immediately yeah. feel that you belong there. So mm -hmm. I am so pleased to tell you that there's definitely companies that's doing that. Um, but I Thank think you. if the CEO is not doing that, that's something that the HR leader should challenge them because how else do you mm. then connect mm. them to the, I want to say, to the purpose of the organization or what do you do? I don't want to say to wow them because it's not about wowing. It is really about making them feel that they belong. Yeah. And, and, and um, Tony Robbins always mentions um, the one human 
connection that we have that all humans have is we just want to be acknowledged yeah. right so if you the thought of the ceo sending me maybe hey welcome to the team whatever yeah. with, a, with a coffee and a bagel you're kind of going Sure, that's not something I expect, right? I mean, I, I've also been to, uh, speaking to a, a sales guru from uh, from the US, um, based in Florida, uh, and one of the things he's done, even in um, in his sales environment, is he's gone to the degree of when he's gone through a bit of sales process and really started engaging with his clients, um, he handwrites uh, notes. Um, welcoming like them for you know and, and thanking them for taking the time to spend some time with him and like he's literally got handwritten notes that he's and his teams help him like handwrite the, the the notes because they you know they're doing that level of business yeah. and you're kind of going you know and, and that's what people need we we need that human connection we want to know that that the, the value that I'm bringing to this table yeah. is being recognized and worth it. Yeah. And I think we need to do it now more than ever. Exactly. And again, I mean, what I'm saying is you need to decide what's working for your organization. So just mm -hmm. taking this idea that you've mentioned now, we used to do that on pay slips when it was increase month. And that was in the days before we had the electronic pay slips and, you know, the technology working for us when we still had the printed pay slips. And yeah. I promise you, CEO writing on that pay slip, well done. And when it was too much for the CEO, the head of the department, a handwritten note on the pay slip before I distribute the pay slips. And again, <laughs> if the CEO, yeah. breakfast is not something that's possible, then at least just consider what a handwritten note from one of the leaders in the organization will, will do. So yeah. again, just have a look at what will work for your organization. And the, the last point that you mentioned, which I, th I think is really interesting as well, also, you know, something that I don't think a lot of people think about is using technology to your advantage with, with creating some kind of mm. uh, virtual tour, maybe, or yeah. speak to us about what, that kind of element. How do we do that? Yeah. So again, I think that is where we can be clever. Um, and unfortunately, I don't have all the examples off by heart, but I have seen organizations where they have, in a gamification, have done a virtual tour. So it's not necessarily that we now in this, we can't be in this building. There's a different way that with gamification, you have different role plays and we meet here and we have to do a, a little task together. And that's how the team actually get to know one another. Um, so I think there's so many different ways of using technology to our advantage, especially in HR, where a lot of the work is admin. And um, unfortunately, there is a, a big admin workload. And that's another way where you can use the technology to your advantage. And even just a landing page where the newbies can visit, they can look at certain things before they start. I mean, again, you've mentioned videos earlier on. It might be that we invest a little bit of time in telling the story in, vi in videos and that's loaded on the platform and they can watch that even before day number one. So, yeah, yeah there's different um, options to choose. So, Anya, if we have to sort of wrap it up um, and, and give people sort of uh, the, uh, the tips of what we've been speaking about today, what do you want to leave people with today? Because I think uh, all of these are like really, really cool. I think they, <laughs> they really add some, uh, add some value. Okay, so I would think, first of all, think onboarding, think a journey, first 100 days, and what is it that, which points is important. Um, I think it's very, very important to get understanding who's doing what. So what's the role of the manager? What's the role of HR? Um, because as a manager, you actually need to have a conversation with your newbie to say, what do I expect from day one? What do I expect in month one? What do I expect in the first quarter? So the manager has such an important part to play. But I would say in closing, it is all about our brain thrives and work best when we feel safe and when we feel we belong and when we feel we make a meaningful contribution. So whatever yeah. that looks like for you, make them feel safe, make them feel belong, and make them feel they're already making a meaningful contribution. I think that's what they can use as a starting point. Fantastic. Guys, 
Uh, that's the Agile Talent Strategist, Leadership Expert, and Executive Coach, Anya van Beek. Anya, thank you for spending some time with us. I know you're going to be back for more. So, guys, uh, check it out in the next couple of weeks. We're going to have Anya uh, speaking about a whole there. And uh, I think we're going to be spe uh, speaking about recruitment as well, right, Anya? Yeah. Um, and, and a whole bunch of stuff. So, uh, please join us for that. Uh, and it will be out uh, every Wednesday or every other Wednesday um at around 12 o'clock so uh, anya thank you so much for joining me and thanks for spending some time thanks for the invite gavin chat soon chat soon cheers for now bye